Welcome back, friends, to Studio P, a.k.a. my dining room. Today, I'm with a guest that I met last year that I was so excited to be able to work for this music festival, not only to design some artwork, but also to interview a bunch of guests, help promote it. I've never been involved in that side, um, and she gave me a chance. So welcome to the show, Kathy Wright. Thank you. Oh, my God. It's so awesome to hang out with you. It's been like a hot year, I think, yeah. since you and I sat and had lunch yeah. and and got to know each other and uh, decided that this would be a really cool partnership. Yeah, I was like, I was super excited. I sent an email because I had seen, I think I saw D, or on Instagram or something, saw somewhere online, this music festival, Reverb, and I was like, oh, a new music festival in town? This sounds kind of dope. But like, I'm kind of at this point in my career where I want to be involved in more things, especially at the beginning. And and I just sent a like little feeler like, hey, I'd love to work with. And then I got an email back from you, all caps. Yes, yes, yes. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's what I want. I, like, I don't want to beg people to work with me. I want to feel like wanted. And so uh, we got to go have uh, have lunch or whatever. And then we talked for a long ass time. And it was like, cool, this is going to be the beginning of a very long partnership. Yeah. And we loved like we're going to talk a lot about last year and and, and the evolution. But, yeah. you know, it was so fun to have you on board um, because, you know, we're going to get into our history a little bit. But, you know, I spent 30 years in the country music space. Yeah. And so I need somebody to teach me what what this whole other genre of music looks like yeah. and quite frankly teach me the language um teach me the culture yeah. and uh what this what this genre of people are looking for and you are just such an easy um person to have that conversation with so i so appreciate your help last year oh yeah absolutely it was so much fun like even just being backstage and interviewing people but then hanging out with like tom from the plain white tees six months later or whatever when he was on tour like it was it was a lot of fun and i'm excited for this next year because last year I think people just didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Like as much as we tried to promote, we got to promote from more than just like a couple angles, right? To get things out to people these days, it's not through one outlet. You don't right. just put it in the newspaper. You don't just put it on I-94, although that's helpful too. You really have to get through to like everybody. And if you look at like some of these other big brands, they work with, you know, like Quick Trip works with like 40 influencers or something, right? And it's so they're being peppered in everywhere. That's really the only way to get everyone to know about it. But it's hard when you have a baby festival where there's not necessarily the funding that Country Jam has yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to figure out how do we get this to where we want it to be. But you have to accept like, it's a starting point. And you have to realize, like something I realized quickly is especially in this genre of music is that there's a, there's a lot of like, trauma from some shows that people have gone to yeah you know that and i you know you think about warped in the 90s and the 2000s and and what that looked like or woodstock 99 where you know they have these visions of like overcrowding and you know toilets that aren't clean and and i'm like wait what like that's a world i don't even know sure um so i didn't even think that someone would be like oh i've been to those emo festivals i am not interested yeah. and and so there was this whole misconception i think a little bit about you know who we are and are we kind of this fly by night because there's a lot of these types of festivals that come and go very quickly right. and sometimes they come and go before they actually happen yeah. so you know there's a trust factor sure. um in this uh genre of music as well like are you really going to be there are the bands really good because people would be like are they right. really coming and then they'd like our fans would stalk the bands and be like there's no way that they could actually make it from here to there i'm like the yeah. airplanes <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you know sure. it, yeah it's so super crazy and what a cool first year but we learned a lot yeah well i mean but you guys are coming from having 30 years like doing a, mm -hmm. a very successful uh music festival so it's on the same grounds as country jam a lot of the same people that are that are organizing it you guys already know how to throw a successful music festival mm -hmm. not only that um but you recognize everything takes a little while to like build and a lot of people don't have the patience to build they like try something and go oh well it didn't work as well as we wanted it to it's like well no shit it was the first year you're right. doing it like you can't expect it to like have a ton of people show up and everybody know like this is going to be the thing it's there's going to be some resistance because people don't know yet right you got to get them to buy into it by giving them an awesome first experience which for you guys last year was almost too easy because you guys have had country jam with like a huge 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 crowd where everyone's rowdy and then you realize like yeah warp tour a long time ago these people you know who are in a music emo music were younger were rowdier but now the demographic it's like a lot of people in their 30s and stuff it's for everybody but a lot of that demographic are older more respectful to their environment oh my gosh. people <laughs> can we talk about yeah can we I, I have to say that if you ask our team like what was the biggest surprise of reverb music festival last year and it was the it was the guest i mean the they showed up the minute the gates opened they, we had 80% of our crowd had scanned in within an hour, which wow. never happens. Yeah. And they were the kindest, 
cleanest. The, the grounds were cleaner when they left than when they got there. I guarantee you of yeah. that. And they, they, you know, it was a very hot day. Um, it was like 90s. I think it was the hottest day of the summer, to yeah, be honest. Was. And um, they took care of each other, yeah. which I thought was so incredibly beautiful. Um, you know, they would say, hey, can I get you some water? And do you need some help? And let's go find some shade. I mean, I've never met a group of individuals that were so good to each other. Yeah. It was so cool. And then they were absolutely there for every muse every note of every song yeah so they would go watch the act and then they'd go up to high country uh to cool down use the restroom get something to drink maybe have a snack back down like they they sang along to every note of every song and that yeah. was that was a beautiful thing yeah well it showed it was just like super fans right yes. the people who were there were there truly because they loved each of those bands and they, a lot of those bands hadn't i mean they've been performing but they hadn't been around here in forever no so a lot of these people haven't had a chance to see these favorite bands of theirs since high school you know 15 years prior or whatever so they were there because of that but here's the thing like you look at something like country jam and a lot of the people who go they don't even care about the lineup they know it's gonna be dope right. you know but they just go because it's like a big fun party camping weekend it's a whole thing same way with blue ox and all these other things like that's what music festivals are about for a lot of people that's a huge area of opportunity with reverb of yeah. like getting people to realize hey well for one we got two days um with different music so we'll talk about that uh but regardless of who's on the lineup it'll be great you don't even have to look at it it's gonna be great but come here with all of your friends it's just gonna yeah. be a fun experience with everybody not even just the music but just like being around the whole thing and that's where it's gonna grow a lot the I think. energy of that crowd was so amazing yeah and it just like everything about the day felt good mm -hmm. um outside of us it's a little, it's a little sweaty yeah <laughs> yeah well okay. i was in like the the bougie lounge yeah, interviewing exactly. guests in 70 degrees with you were uh, drinking AC. kumbacha and yeah you know, yeah it was it was flushing nice. toilets i was yeah. out in a porta potty and I popped out degrees. to the crowd a couple of times, but it was a, a real brief interaction out there watching. I wish I could have seen more of them. Yeah. You know, that's the only negative part about working with the festivals. You don't get to like sit. People think, oh, you get to go for free. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, kind of, but I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Like, I want to sit there and just watch the whole thing. Like Charlotte Sands, I caught a couple of her songs crushing it. Although, All Time Low, that was rad. They were too busy to want to do an interview, which is totally cool. Talked to him for a while backstage, but they're like, yeah, come with, you can hang out. So I was on the stage in the back by the sound, like having a beer watching from that point of view. And I was like, wow. That point of view is, this is pretty sweet. Yep. Yeah. You know, I was, I was, I don't know, 21 when I started doing this. And uh, my dad, um, who comes from the very strong business world and, you know, I have an overachieving sister who's an accountant and, and myself and, you know, it was like, oh, my sister does this. He's like, I don't know, Keth does concerts. And so he came to our festival one year and I brought him up on stage during oh, cool. one of those vantage points. And to stand there, you know, at Country where you've got 20,000 people, for him to stand there and look out at that crowd and watch them, every single one of them singing every single note at the top of their lungs. I mean, I remember him just looking at me and going, wow, I get it now. Yeah. So I can't imagine being the artist and having that happen yeah. specifically for you. But that, and you know, you touched on that bougie backstage area. And I think that was something that was so different for us as well. You know, in the, in the country world, festivals, not even in the country, but festivals in general are so unique because artists never in the same city at the same time. Right. So, you know, they, they hop, they follow, you know, but they're never sitting together. So you'll often walk into catering and artists will be like, oh my God, how's it going? I haven't seen you in so long. And, and I think that's what was so cool about Reverb in that lounge that we created backstage is bands were like, dude, I haven't seen you in like 15 years. And remember when we played, you know, Warped in San Francisco, like yeah. they're just throwing around all these memories and what's going on. And I mean, pictures of kids coming out on phones and that. That kids with. Right, yes, you know I mean? yes. <laughs> yeah, like Randy Winter had his little two-year-old like from Red Jumpsuit Apparatus yes. that was running around with him. Tom from the Plain White Tees has his teenage son just like touring with them. They're playing beanbags behind, yeah. you know what I mean, backstage. It was, it was really cool to see those people at the stage of life that they're at still crushing it and i think being appreciated meant something to them because mm -hmm. it really like not to downplay their success but like they faded for a bit that whole genre of music faded for a bit so the fact it's making a resurgence and they're treated again like the rock stars they are i'm sure they're pretty stoked yeah you know? and and to to ba basically reunite with their people right yeah. you know to to find those fans again and you know and watch them transform themselves and we had we had these two gals and and we yeah, we'd been watching them all day and they were probably in their late 30s and they were reliving 
middle school. Yeah. And so we made up our whole story about them. I'm like, they're sisters. And somebody's like, <laughs> now nah, they're they're high school besties. Like, so we had this whole story made up, like what we thought their story was, because again, they were those two gals. You know, they didn't fit the the look, if you will. Like they didn't have that, you know, it's pure emo look. But man, did they did they go back in time in the first note that was hit, they were back. Yeah. And so at the end of the night, I was like, I gotta ask you guys some questions. Like, what is your story? And they actually were sisters. Oh, cool. And they were like, this, we saw this, and I, they came from like Missouri or something insane. Sure. Well, because yeah. the lineup was really unique. Yeah. Like was. I said, those people haven't been together in one place for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And so now that there's camping involved and people have an excuse to stay overnight, I think there's going to be even more people that are coming from a long ways away. But yeah. that's the funny thing, too, about like that, that group of people. The type of music that you listened to 15, 20 years ago, you used to at that age in your adolescence dress and like try to be those people. You know what I mean? And then you grow up into your own adult. You can't you cannot pick out like people who like emo music on the street anymore. No. Like they don't all have black hair that swooped with like the poof. Like they don't look like that. The, we had a piece of merch that just said elder emo yeah. and it sold out in like seven seconds. Yeah. And the other one said um, emo is not dead. It just it. It just got married and had kids. Oh my God, for <laughs> right? real. For yeah. real. Like, and you know, I'm I'm a little bit older than that genre, so I grew up in the eighties. Sure. So I get it because, you know, I'm I'm little miss country music, but if you throw guns and roses on the stage, mm-hmm. I will lose my mind. Right. Like, and how many people are dressing like hair metal walking oh my around? Gosh. Like you know what I mean? they they don't dress like that, but they still love it. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, anyone who sees that live is gonna love it anyways. I'm too concerned about the environment to do what I used to do to my hair. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> there, there, well, there's... plus potentially ninety degrees, hopefully. Right. But you know, hey, at least it didn't rain let's talk about earlier on though so you said you've been doing this music festival uh game for a very long time in your career Mm -hmm. how and why did you get started in doing that was that with country jam from the beginning are you from this area and like how did that kind of line up so dumb luck is always my answer so i have a degree in geriatric social work okay um which is always fun to say. Um, but uh, I, when I was in college here at UW-Eau Claire, and I ran into the investors from the festival, we're out golfing. Okay. And they said, you should come and bartend. And oh, cool. you can meet all the stars. And I said, I don't like country music, but does can I make some money? Because I have to pay tuition. Um, so I just started helping them out um, that summer in the bars. And then um, uh, the next summer, I took over managing their bars. And so I completed my degree. I went and I worked um, for the Pepin County Department on Aging for a little while. And um, uh, while that's still something I love and hold very near and dear to my heart, I realized I really liked this festival stuff. So yeah. um, in 1999, I came on full time as a sponsorship marketing director and have, um, this is, I think, festivals number 59 and 60 for me this summer. Whoa. And um, we also produced two festivals in Western Colorado. We produced a country music festival and a rock festival out there as well. So I would spend time in Colorado um, doing those two events and then time here doing Country Jam here. So, you know, I just, I grew into something that I absolutely loved. Yeah. And uh, it's just been what I did. I took a little hiatus when my son was younger. Sure. Because it that that lifestyle takes its toll yeah. um, on your ability to be a really great mom. Right. And so I took a little break and worked in television and then came back um, sure. right before the pandemic. And it's, it's such a cool gig yeah well yeah i mean every year is different every festival is different you get to work with different musicians you get to it's it's a very unique experience but yeah it is to, it you know even if you work the same amount of hours which i'm sure you work more but even if you work the same amount having an erratic schedule feels like a lot more demanding on your body right. you know what i mean and on your mind and on everything because you have to go 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 well when it's festival time obviously you're well aware it's not a full-time gig now it's like it's all day gig. every single day mm-hmm. leading up to and then after for a little bit like it's almost like a teacher where you have off season a little bit but when it's in season it's all day every day which i'm sure like it's really hard to be the person you want for your friends your family for anything else or any other thing you have interest in because you have to be so full in on the festival yeah i mean i used to say we used to love our colorado festival because we weren't home Mm. so i didn't have to feel bad that i wasn't spending time with my dog i didn't have to worry that i hadn't had dinner with my parents you know so there was there was a there was an escape hatch in that festival but you're right you know we've had i mean not to get weird or anything but i mean we had one of our staff members parents pass away in the middle of the festival and he he had to stay right like he he, monday morning he went and and handled his family business but yeah i mean a a lot goes down and a lot can happen and you just have to 
you have to realize that there are four days of your life that are non-negotiable. Right. Well, Ish. each person has such a huge role. Right. And it's pivotal. And the other people don't can't just pick up the slack. It just doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? I mean, mine's very different. The pressures are different. But I also, like, if a, if a music artist is coming through, this day, this time, when they're available is the only time I can do this thing. I don't really have a choice. I have to do it during that time frame. However, the rest of my life is generally right. pretty flexible. So like the trade-off is very much worth it. I've been listening to all that music, like Mike Jones, I've been listening to heavy ever since, which is like making me deep dive into Paul Wall and all these other artists that I haven't listened to since I was like, yeah, middle school, high school, and I'm 34. So it's been a minute, but these guys are still crushing it. So you came back right before the pandemic. So reverb wasn't a thing yet, but it was around that time frame that um, the people who own Country Jam were looking at buying a property, yeah. right? Because for the longest time, which blows my mind for that many years, they were renting property. Yeah. Um, but they finally bought a, a pretty big space to like build the grounds. There's a ton of advantages obviously to that, but it's a big investment. Can you kind of tell me about how and why that happened and like when? Yeah, you know, the old festival site was rented forever. And you know, the festival really was a, um, a business hobby. Um, for a lot of for our ownership group, our prior ownership group, and um, it, it was beautiful as along the banks of the Chippewa River, but it was in a floodplain. Yeah. So there was truly nothing we could build there that was permanent. So it was a perfect place for us to have a music festival. It was just super easy, and we could come in, turn the lights on for the month of July, and then go home. Yeah. And that worked really well. But you know, as as a new group of owners came in and they looked at the business model and and what we what else we could be doing, you know, it was uh, could we do more festivals? And if we did, how, how do we make that make sense? And and buying our own property was how we did that. Yeah. And then it that grew into larger conversations like how do we keep ourselves busy year round? Because there is this perception that this isn't a year round job. Trust me, it is. Um, so we built two full um, two year round event facilities. One built more corporate event wedding type things. We had a huge event in there last night with dueling pianos, which was so fun. It's like my favorite thing. And then our other venue, which is the High Country. Um, that one was built for the same thing, weddings, corporate events, big garage doors, kind of a little more industrial feeling. Um, but that one also is built for production. So we were able to throw bands up on stage um, in there, which is really fun. And so we've even had a couple private parties that have brought in national entertainment um, mm. to do to play their birthday parties or a corporate event in there. So sure. um, that's cool. But then the site itself, the overall site itself, we've had it rented. Now we're on our, I think we just booked our fourth, you know, three to five thousand person company appreciation oh, cool. um, so that's really cool so it allowed us to just do some different things moving forward and you know as we look at Eau Claire and what Eau Claire needed um, what Eau Claire didn't have was was an outdoor event space that that could be bigger than Phoenix Park um, but serve things like motorcycle rallies or um, major company parties um, open houses just really cool entertainment stuff. So, we're, you know, we're able to lean into that as well. So the facility itself is 160 acres. We have 1,100 campsites, 450 of them have full power hookup. Oh, wow. um, we have two special event facilities, one with 19,000 um, square feet, one with 11,000 square feet. And I'm um, able just to put in more permanent infrastructure, which makes my life significantly easier because we aren't rebuilding and tearing down the city every year now. Right. You know, the city relatively remains up. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it allows you to do a whole lot more and provide a better experience for everybody too, right? Even just the music artists, like them being able to come and have their own right. nice, fancy dressing rooms yes. and everything and feel appreciated. And one thing is like, if people don't feel appreciated, they're not going to perform as well. Not just like music artists, but just in general, employees, Correct. everybody, you have to show that you appreciate these people. And a lot of these people, these rock stars don't like the rock star life is a lot of them. Like when I was talking to Tom from playing my tees, looking for any shower that can be used, right. doesn't matter how dingy it is. Like they just don't have the things there for them. So when they come to a place and they like the experience, you know, regardless of the size of crowd or payment or anything else, they just like being here. They're much more apt to book it again. Yeah. You know, and if you're they're looking long term, that's what you have to do. And they're at that point in their career. They're yeah. like, you know, when I was a young kid living out of my van, mm -hmm. you know, I could shower at the truck stop. But you know what? I don't want to do that. You know, it even comes down to catering. Yeah. You know, when you when you talk about, you know, everyone always asks, like, what's on the artist rider? That's the question we get from everybody. Sure. Like, you know, do they only want green M&Ms? No. That's right. not true. But you know what? If you woke up every day and and got off your bus and you were at a music festival and like, here's some burgers and brats for lunch. 
Ugh, you know, right. and, and if you're performing, so, you know, the, just having things like understanding the the vegetarian and vegan lifestyle is very strong now. So making mm-hmm. sure we have really good options, not just white, po- you know, pasta with white cream sauce. So right. having fresh vegetables and fruits and what's really been cool in the last couple of years is the artist is really asking for local. Oh, and sure. that's sort of, you know, that's like my favorite thing to do ever yeah. is um, talk about, you know, these are, you know, and of course, cheese curds is the the go-to right but even like we'll, we'll always have something prepared with silver spring horseradish on the yeah. menu and, and then we have a little like hey did you know claire's horseradish capital of the world sure um so you i know, didn't know that actually you didn't know that no we have the horseradish capital of the world oh cool i know we are like the cube capital as well yeah but i've never played cube either i haven't either we have a gal in the office that keeps calling it cube i'm like can we can sure. we <laughs> anyway I yeah, yeah. so yeah so it, it's really fun now when they come they're actually looking for that for for right. a clean shower but they're actually looking for an experience and to get to know the community a little bit as well so when they get up on stage they aren't like hey great to see you wisconsin you know right, now they yeah. already they are they kind of have a little bit of feel about us and they're even asking for like sheets like tell me about your community so when i get up on stage i know who i'm singing to and yeah. that is really cool yeah yeah well they're just true professionals yeah you know like i saw um papa roach uh, like last year, I interviewed the creative director, which is the younger brother of the singer. And so they were coming through Milwaukee and he texted me. He's like, yo, you want to come hang out? I was like, yeah, sure. So I went and saw him. And I was never like a huge fan of Papa Roach. Like I've listened to him or whatever a long time ago. But wow, were they good. And it was just, it made sense because it's like a lot of music nowadays, not to like, you know, shit on it, but like they don't, they haven't perfected the performance because they know the vast majority of people are going to listen to the stream. So a lot of it's done on computers. There's so many things done to people's voices. They don't necessarily sound the same on stage. A lot of these bands, and I'm talking about these email bands and stuff too, and I'm talking about the rappers we're about to talk on, they have been performing for such a long time. They're Mm -hmm. dialed in. Like they are really good to see live. And I think so much of our like lives are lived online now. People are starving to do stuff like publicly. They want to have something to, a reason to go hang out with their friends. And so as much as like some things like brick and mortar stores are struggling more and more, and I think that's going to slowly fade out of um, the forefront. Things like music festivals, I think, are only going to get bigger. I hope so. Because a lot of people, but really, like people mm-hmm. who work, even like their corporate jobs, nowadays, a lot of the things are on Zoom. They need some reason to go out and do stuff because a lot of the things now aren't like that. So I think it's only going to get bigger. Let's talk about it getting bigger, though. It's two yeah, days now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just makes sense to do two days in general. But like, why did you guys to, uh, choose to do two days? And then why is it two totally separate types of music? I'm stoked because like I actually didn't listen to a ton of emo music growing up i'm the exact age for it but i just never was into that what i was into were mike jones and young jock and Twi- like all these rappers like that's what i listen to why is it two genres of music and why is it two days well it's two days because logistically if you build the city once you, maybe mm-hmm. you want to stay two nights right mm-hmm. um so that's first and foremost but really there are two while there are two almost polar opposite genres right there's this little bit of crossover so they both come from the 2000s so i, I we have a, our partner of ours that does all of our merch kelsey she's fantastic and she said it perfectly she's like kathy it is my youth and it was whether i was partying or sad yeah. And so sure. it, it, it's, she's like, both of these days are the soundtrack to my youth, um, but it really just depended on what mood I was in. Right. So, you know, there, there's crossover really in the age group a little bit, but so they while they're very opposite, there is a little bit of synergy between the between the two of them. And we, we I mean, we did look long at heart at making it two, two different festivals, but we thought, why do that? Like reverb is music that resonates. So if you want to come and be a part of the community for two days, go for it. If you only want to come one day or go for the other day, we've got that for you as well. And you, you can camp on site. If you only want to come Saturday, come Friday, hang at your campsite and listen to all of this great music. If you don't want to go in, you don't have to hang out at your campsite, chill, play yard games and listen to TI and genuine. And you know, So, um, yeah, so the, the ability to expand just made sense. And uh, we, we wanted something that there could be a lot of crossover for. And what we're finding is like the, the our guests from last year, our OGs are saying, 
that's cool. Not my thing, but I'm going to come and see it anyway. Sure. You know, so there, there, as there's enough curiosity in the crossover, I think. Mm. Um, and then you have some like, I'm only coming Friday. Let me tell you, the millennial moms have lost their ever loving minds over this lineup I'm on sure. Friday night. I mean, T.I., Genuine, Trick Daddy, Bubba Sparks, XXX. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, this is, you say the name and they're like, their butts just like, uh, uh. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but look at like the Wisconsin State Fair. They had like Nelly or yes, whatever, and yes. people loved it. Sold they were out. stoked like, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so again, it's that going back. It's so much nostalgia. Yeah, right. And it takes you back to a time that just felt good. Mm -hmm. So you know, you 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 mobilize that group of people that were part of that part of your life, and it gives you a great excuse to have this this evening to go out and reconnect with right. with that time in your life. Well, it's cool that you guys are targeting something that doesn't exist already. Like Soundset right. obviously isn't a thing. I'm not saying that this is on the same thing of Soundset, totally different and, and whatever, but we just didn't have anything hip hop at all anywhere around no. this area, not even in Minneapolis. So no. like there's a huge need for something like that. You know, I still think Soundset should come back because that was so sick, but <laughs> like they, we don't have anything like that. So to finally have something in the area for it and why, why not have more of them? You know, like you said, it's easier just have them to be two, like in, in one festival. But if you see more areas of like, well, nobody's doing this. We mm -hmm. have the property to do it. We have the team already built. Like we just should, like the community needs it. Why, obviously we're gonna. And what I love about it, you know, and, and Wisconsin is really good at country music festivals. I mean, well, yeah. There's more in Wisconsin there is in any other place in the country, probably really? in the world. And um, so so we're all really battling in that world and, and it, it it's it's wonderful, but, we just looked around and said, what isn't being served? Right. Like why jump in the pool with, you know, there's already 700 other people in it. There's a lot of pee in it, right? So right. go find your own pool. And yeah. so there was a lot of question and, and we have some some partners of ours um, through our agency that are doing similar things that um, they're just finding great success. And probably most importantly, they're, they're, people are calling saying, thank you. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for creating this for us. Nobody's doing this for us. And and again, it goes back to that sense of community that we were talking about. And right. I mean, Friday night's gonna be lit. Like I'm it's sure. gonna be insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and how stinking cool is that? And yeah. um again, there's gonna be a whole every 40 year old woman I know is like yeah. already has their ticket, they're dialed in, they've yeah. got, you know. We're gonna be seeing, we're gonna see a lot of moms twerking. It's yes. gonna be. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, the it's chiropractors gonna... will be busy on Monday. Oh my God, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So what role specifically do you have these days with it? You're the director, yeah, right? But yeah. what does that exactly mean? Do you book all of the acts? You you manage all the people? How many people are on the team for that matter? For so country um, team? For we Reaper? have, there's six of us full time and then oh, we have okay. an intern. And and, uh, shout out to Pierce. You guys do a lot for six people. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many people do Country Jam has what, 20,000? How uh -huh. many people go? Yeah, 15 to 20,000 yeah. a day. Yeah. So six people to organize that's that's pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't sleep a lot, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's and it's a, our team's phenomenal. Like they yeah. they're unbelievable. So yeah, there's six of us that work year round full time, getting everything planned and prepped. Um, and I don't remember what your question was. How well, I, I asked what is your specific <laughs> oh, my role? role. With yeah. It? yeah. So I'm the festival director. So basically, I oversee I oversee soup to nuts, like front to back, every every component of the festival I'm responsible for. But um, with that, like we have a site superintendent. The joke in the office is if it starts with P, I don't touch it. Power, plumbing, potty, paramedics, <laughs> police, um, put camping. Um, like I just, I, those are things I don't, I don't belong sure. anywhere near that. But I need to understand what the power is and I need to understand why the plumbing's there, right? Right. Um, and then um, we have an accountant that does the accounting. Um, we have a sponsorship uh, person that handles all of our partnerships box office manager that handles our ticketing and then we have a director of operations and um she handles kind of a lot of stuff side by side with us you know vendors and um according our tents our toilets are you know just a lot of that hotel rooms that we need for crew like a lot of sure. that kind of stuff so um yeah it's it's pretty cool and then um the kind of majority of my role is all of our marketing our pr guest experience um i work with our agent to cultivate and book the lineup um and then creating brand 
Um, sure. And we all work together as a team on guest experience. You know, yeah. what, what cool things can we have at the festival? Last year we had live art, which was super cool. We had yeah. 20 murals painted over the course of the festival that yeah. um, now hang all around town. So, you know, what is that guest looking for when they come besides the music? Right. Um, so yeah, that's that's the crew that makes this thing happen. I think you guys have a really cool role with the city. Like Visit Eau Claire does dope stuff, not knocking them at all. I've worked with them, they're awesome. Um, but I think your role with what you bring to Eau Claire is really underrated from that standpoint because you really bring a lot of people to the city that otherwise would never be here, not just the artists, but just other people. And this year, at least I've noticed from the marketing on like Instagram and stuff, you guys are really trying to promote Eau Claire yeah. and like other stuff to do. Like, why, why did you choose to do that? I think it's awesome, but like, why did you choose to like, okay, let's not focus on just the festival. Let's focus on like, these are the other highlights for the area. A couple reasons. We are we are pleasantly surprised at how far people traveled to come to Reverb. Yeah. Um, and so they they we saw them fly from I don't remember how many states people came in from and and we think we missed an opportunity to show them why we live here. Right. You know, and that that you know old joke is why do you live where the air hurts your face? And the sure. answer is let me make you a list. Yeah. You know, because yeah. this is a pretty cool place to live, especially in the summer. So, so. Part of it was um, we want to show, showcase and show off our community. You know, the, the deeper answer is that leads to economic development, that leads to job growth, that leads to people choosing to live here because mm -hmm. they came here and they thought it was amazing. So deep answer there. But we want people to say, this reverb thing is really cool. What else can I do when I'm Eau Claire? So, so it makes the decision to come here better. Yeah. So reverb is amazing, but I'm also going to spend a day on the bike trail. You know, they've got this really, really cool um, kayaking adventure I can do. And the sculpture tour is amazing. So, so we want them to, the festival is going to sell itself, but then we want all the more reasons to come to the festival or, or what you can do outside of it. And it really developed out of, we went to Stagecoach a couple of years ago, which is the, which is Coachella's country little sister. Oh, sure. I don't even know if it's a little sister, just country's sure. Coachella's sister, which is in Palm Springs. Hmm. And, um, I'm an adventurer, and so we went out because I specifically was 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 learning about Stagecoach, and then I said, well, first of all, I had to Google, like, where is it? Um, Palm Springs, okay, what's Palm Springs? Learned about that, and then I started looking into it. We ended up going out for six days. We spent two days in the Joshua Tree. That was 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Um, what can you do in Palm Springs? We So I, because this is what I love to do, but I built myself this really cool itinerary to spend five days in Palm Springs. Yeah. And we don't want people to just come into the festival and go home. Right. You know, even one morning we were in the hotel lobby and we were eating breakfast and these people clearly had been at Stagecoach the night before. And um, we're all eating breakfast, you know, our, our free breakfast in the morning and, and uh we were dressed to go hiking. The one guy's like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, there's this really kick butt hike. We're going to end at a waterfall, waterfall in the middle of the desert. Then there's this really cool restaurant downtown we're checking out and they have this you know, specialty cocktail and he's like staring at me, just slow blinking. Like, yeah. He's like, How, what? And everybody else was just sitting in their hotel room waiting for the gates to open it too. And I thought, mm -hmm. hey, Palm Springs, you're missing out. Yeah. So we wanted to invite that person to, to experience our community and all the really cool stuff we do here, but also it, it creates more of an itinerary for people to come. Yeah. Besides well, I think the music. You got to look at like what the secondary effects are of these things instead of being so focused on the short term of like, we need people to get tickets now. It's like, yeah, but you always need to look at the long goal. Like, what is your ultimate goal to have this thing grow and to be something everyone wants to go to every year? Again, regardless of lineup, right? So if you can get people to come here for multiple days, experience the city, and it's their excuse once a year to come up to Wisconsin because it's gorgeous in the summer, then they'll get tickets anyways. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And that's how it is with good music festivals. People don't go to Coachella just because Frank Ocean was supposed to perform or whatever like they go because of the whole experience right which is not just the music artists that are there so i mean and eau claire just has like a ton of things to offer but what does it look like for people who are going this year because you said it's two days yes. what's the general kind of like pricing options what does camping entail are there like places for people to shower like what because it's not that expensive it like isn't. realistically the sp starting tickets for friday were really cheap i was yeah. kind of blown away by how cheap they were which i get it it's a smaller music festival than country jam is but it's on the same grounds it gives you the same things right like right now a two-day ticket's 119 bucks yeah like, oh, and it's you're getting cheap. you're getting yeah. two solid days like you can't even go to you can't even go to a stadium show for that right and and the other thing is you're not paying stadium show prices our beers are not 16 dollars right. 
you can hardly go to Valley Fair for that. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. you know, yeah, you're getting a huge value and that's really the, the, the mm. sell of festivals, right? Is the value of that ticket. Um, yeah. So, you know, again, right now it's 119 bucks for a two day general admission ticket. If you want to be in the pit, it's, I gotta look, it's 209 if you want to be in the pit. Every show, every note, every day for two days. Yeah. Um, like. 209 bucks that's mm -hmm. a huge value so that that's cool and then we have camping available right on site and um our camping like i mentioned you can you can get electrical hookups if you want camping opens thursday night and you can stay through sunday oh, cool. um so you can make a weekend of it so if let's say you're you're the hip-hop fan you roll in thursday night after work set up you go all day the friday the festival is awesome not an emo fan perfect saturday morning get up we've got an itinerary for you yeah you know you're gonna float the river at loopies you're gonna go down to farmer's market you're gonna check out the shopping downtown come back camp and maybe you can hear the music from your campground right. or your campsite um campgrounds are brand new Sure. They're beautiful. Um, hot showers with shower dividers. It's that not like clutch. Yes. I mean and, <laughs> For and a music it's a festival. it's a brand new building. Right, so yeah. it's not gross. It's really nice. Our porta potties are clean like four times a day. We have the cleanest potties in the planet. And yeah. that's like that's a non negotiable for me. Um, yeah. because I have to use them. So I mean it, it so the camping experience is really cool. And what I love about the camping experience is you meet, like the people that you meet, everybody rolls in, right? And then you just go around and you're talking to people and you're meeting. You know, we have one guy we love him. We call him first in line, Steve. Um, and I think he's probably your neighbor because he lives right here in Eau Claire. And he showed up at noon when the campgrounds opened. He was the first guy there. Sure. And he like set up this little pup tent. It was just him. Yeah. camping all by himself and he made so many friends and of course the whole staff knew him so he'd be like Steve you know yeah, he sure. was, he's a celebrity but um, you know the the campground experience people were playing coob out there there's some people that just tied up a hammock yeah and they just hammock camped sure and they could do that because we have the shower building shower building has power so if you need to you know right dry your hair i don't know well again this place is set up for a much larger festival right. so if you're coming to this smaller one you get the vip experience just right. for being there right like, and, that's a and huge it's, advantage. it's like like the the campground and the festival are adjacent right it's not a long walk it's not it, it's you can be at your campsite in four minutes like right. it's right there and yeah. so um and you can camp we had everything from diesel pusher crazy tour buses in there to sure. like someone camping in a hammock yeah. So all are welcome. Yeah. Well, and it's like, it really is just outside of Eau Claire, like on the property line. Like it is basically Eau Claire where you can get an Uber to stay wherever you want. Absolutely. If you don't want to be camping or whatever, there's so many hotels in Eau Claire and an Uber to and from. And you guys are offering some kind of, do you have shuttles? Yeah, we do. So yeah, we so. run shuttles from four of our hotels. You can check out our website for right, the hotels yeah, that absolutely. we run from. And that's the cat's pajamas. You right. don't have, then you don't have to worry about anything, right? Yeah. It's 20 bucks, get on the bus. Right. And with how much you're saving on the ticket price, like you can yeah. get and a little bougie. And you're not paying to park. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And because, yeah, I mean, I, I love, I, I'm not a camper. Sure. Um, full disclosure. So, you know, I would be the hotel person, but right. um, I would want the shuttle service then. So totally. we're really trying to make it easy for both of you. Awesome. How did you guys decide on uh, the artist specifically? I'm sure some of it is like this person's coming through right. the area because I would assume that has to be somewhat the reason why it's Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, not Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. because a lot of these artists were performing somewhere and they're kind of coming through and Friday just worked with people's schedules. Because a lot of times you kind of have to work with that. You do, absolutely. It's yeah. called routing. Oh, so, sure. you know, it, these genres are a little different because they don't roll in with semi trucks and buses like they would at, at country, but right. they, they still got to roll in ish. And so, um, you know, there is part of it was routing. Um, and then the other thing is really managing their other plays. So mm. if an artist is playing Minneapolis, they can't play us. Right. So they have to be more than 150 miles away. Um, so, you know, we had to pull out anybody that was already playing in the area and with Twin Cities being so close to us. Um, so that was a lot of it. And then really just cultivating like what felt good with what, mm -hmm. you know, you know, does, does trick daddy pair with Twista, you know, how do you, um, how do you make sure you're not making too many left turns in the lineup and people get whiplash? So you really have to, there is a flow to the day. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I'll be honest, we have a, a gal that we work with at our agency that this, she just, this is her world sure. and she's just dialed into all of it. And so she was really, really helpful in helping us kind of cultivate that. But you got a couple people that you added late that are like local kind of, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, really so excited about that. Yeah. Uh, Pelly and Kalia universe, um, both, uh, relatively local artists and, you know, Kalia universe is very strong, um, in the community yeah um when we talk about you know uh types of music and people that are that aren't served by the festivals that are currently in our community that's huge right um so you know we're we're really hoping to see her community come out and um be a part of her performance on friday yeah. as well and 
that's pretty cool. Because she performed in Eau Claire for Mung Fest, yes. right? Yes. Was that last year? Or last something? year. Yep. Yeah, because I remember talking to somebody and they brought up I forget who it was. And I, I want to say they said something like, she's basically the Hmong Jennifer Lopez. Mm-hmm. You need to know her. And yes. I was like, oh, sick. Yes. Yeah. So I DM'd her the other day. So I think we are going to do an interview probably before the festival. We'll try to do some of that. I want to do, and I should be, it's just we, we've got to connect with some of these people. I really think just leading up to the festival, even little like three minute Zoom right? ones. So that way we can get some cool little like snippet clips and stuff talking about Eau Claire with the different people. I think that would be huge because obviously a lot of what you need to do promotion wise again is look long term and go, OK, well, let's create the FOMO for next year by doing showing off how cool it was this year. Don't miss it next year. Um, but trying to take advantage of any way that you can talk about it ahead of time, because again, last year I got a lot of messages from people afterwards going dude how did i not know and i said yeah. i don't know i posted about it a lot dude right like, <laughs> right, right right yeah yeah it, let's let's hold logistics reverb yeah. music festival reverbwi.com august 16th and 17th in eau claire 16th is our hip-hop day pelly kalia universe bubba sparks young jock uh, mike jones twisted trick daddy genuine ti saturday is um amber pacific emory secondhand serenade amberlynn hawthorne heights story of the year in yellow card and it is a friday saturday it not a, a saturday friday. sunday Correct. so plan it and take that day off. And then you can even use promo code PassionPod for $10 off your ticket. I mean, it just keeps getting better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it's, yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the larger festival a little bit because Reverb wouldn't exist if it weren't for Country Jam. Correct. Right, so what is Country Jam up to these days? Now it has its new facility, it's bigger and better than ever, and it's coming up soon, Yeah, right? we're Yeah, we're mid-July. Yeah, okay, um, cool. For our country music festival. And so, yeah, like I mentioned, we're in our, I don't know, 34, 35. Then there was COVID. I don't know. We've been doing this a very long time. Yeah. And um, this year, our lineup is is pretty cool. You know, I mentioned earlier that Wisconsin has a ton of, of country music festivals and, and really trying to figure out, like, what makes you different is right. always a question we ask ourselves. And so we started uh, post-COVID always trying to find something different, mm-hmm. a little something a little maybe that somebody has to Google to understand. Like Taylor Swift at the beginning? Oh, for sure. <laughs> you guys yep. did have Taylor Swift. We did, we yeah. did, we yeah. did. Um, as a matter of fact, we just found some old pictures at the other day, but we always, <laughs> so we've had, you know, we've brought in Whiskey Myers, so a little bit heavier on that Americana side of things. Um, we had Cody Johnson, who's very strong in the West, um, you know, big rodeo guy. And we brought him in and everyone's like, I don't know who he is. I'm like, you're gonna yeah. trust me. I mean, and he blew the, doors off the joint. So um, this year, you know, we pulled in acts like Shane Smith and the Saints. Um, that's going to be just a phenomenal show. And then Ian Munsek, who is, who's again, he's that rodeo, he's that rodeo, you know, he still actively ranches on his family ranch <laughs> cool. and he's, he's a cowboy. Yeah. Um, and so, and he's very eclectic and kind of wonky. And so really pulling those different types of things in. And like I said, we've gotten to the point now where I, everybody always says, who's who's the one, Kath? Like, who's sure. the one that we're gonna be talking about Monday morning? Yeah. So and I think this year it's gonna be Ian. Um, but, and then Hardy is our headliner Thursday night, and he's really had this metamorphosis in the last year. You know, Hardy has, has, has come up through songwriting and uh, really came into his own in 20, late 21, 22 as, an, as a performing artist. And then this last year, he found out he, found out he could scream like a rock star. Oh, cool. And so he, he, has, he has the Mockingbird and the Crow. And so the Mockingbird is his countryside and the Crow is it is hardcore rock. Oh, cool. And so you are going to watch what happens when a rock show and a country show collide. And like he's going to, you're either going to love it or hate it. And I'm telling sure. you, I'm going to love it. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, um, so he's going to be amazing. Brothers Osborne, they are some of my favorites, just full on great entertainment, doors to doors with them. And then ta- Saturday night, we have Thomas Rhett. I mean, that's just a Saturday night, just always this big old fashioned sing along. You know, yeah. his string of number one hits is there. He's been doing this for several decades. He's the purest, kindest dad in country music. Yeah. Um, so um, we're, we're looking forward to him. And we always throw some throwbacks in the lineup from the 90s because everybody loves 90s country. So, you know, this sure. year we have Black Hawk and Chris Cagle. And so, um, and then, we, you know, we always try and lean into what's that new artist we want to introduce you to. So, young lady named Ella Langley um, is going to be on Saturday. We've got Austin Snell on Friday. Um, and Aiden Canfield on Thursday. So, you know, I always tell people when they look at, they're like, I'm not going to get there at two o'clock. I don't know who Ella Langley is. I'm like, um, Kenny Chesney's played it too. Uh, Montgomery Gentry's played at noon. Leanne Rimes has played at noon. Jason Aldean has played at two o'clock. Eric Church has played at two o'clock. Kane Brown, you know, so 
be careful because everybody today loves to say, I remember when you had Taylor Swift right. at five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Like, yep, yeah, we sure did. And if you were like, I'm not going to go see her. You're, yeah, you're blowing out. it. Yeah. Well, you're paying for the ticket anyways. Take right. advantage of it. Why would you not go? Right. Especially again with like new facilities and stuff. Like you should definitely go. If you're paying for it, you should definitely go. What are tickets like for that? I mean, it's a way bigger festival. Right, right. So obviously yeah. it's Tickets more, for but... three days are under 200 bucks. Really? Yep. Wow. Yep. And I guess you... I thought it was a lot more expensive because I've never gone. I don't yeah. listen to country music. Yep. So. Nope. Under 200 bucks for oh, all cool. three days. I mean, if you try and go see anyone at a, at a shed in Minneapolis right now, it's $200 for one show. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the, again, back to that value of the festival, you can camp right on site, which is awesome. And our camping at jam is because it's cultivated, right? We've been doing it for years. So, right. um, you know, our campgrounds are a ton of fun and just the experience of the music. We have a side stage that we've got some really cool entertainment happening on. And, um, it, it's country jam is just a country jam's a feel. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, we always say everybody in this community has a jam. Well, except you've never been, but everybody in this community has a jam <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, like sure. everybody has some moment in time that they can identify that happened at jam. And I, I love hearing everybody's stories about well, that just it. means i have to be at jam this year yes you should be at jam yeah. this year yes yeah. you should. i'll come with i want I, I should start interview i have interviewed some country music stars like chris cruzy i interviewed some other people um but i should pop over and do that maybe i'll send some dms to some people and try to line something up that that'll be fun all right i always ask the same question on every episode when you do something that you're really passionate about for a living you get to have really unique experiences such as hanging out with taylor swift when she was super young and not the Arguably the most famous person in the world right now? Probably. You know, I was thinking about that the other day and I was like, who's the most famous? I feel like she's more famous than any of our world leaders at this point. Maybe, maybe not, but she's right up there. She's like epic, epic famous. But anyways, what was your most, what is your favorite experience, most memorable experience from last year at Reverb? At Reverb. Um, I have two. Okay. Um, Cause one it was before the festival. Okay. And uh, we have to go pick up all the vehicles that we that we drive the artists around in. And so our our team was all loaded into my car and we were on our way to pick to one automotive to pick up our, our runner vehicles. And I have a song from Rascal Flats called Here's to You. It's kind of my walk on song for the morning of the festival. <laughs> cool. And it's old and it's nine and it's so two thousands pop country. And so I made the whole staff listen to it and I sang it at the top of my lungs and <laughs> I looked ridiculous in the car. And then we got done and one of the girls in the back seats like, Gimme the ox. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So then she played um, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Oh, sure. um, I don't know what the name of the song is. It's, face Down. Yes, Face Down, one. yes. Yeah. And I was like, this song is fantastic. So it was that was a super cool memory. But um, I, I think probably my favorite memory from the weekend was watching my two sisters. Um, sure. and, 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 and it's hard because last year there are so many. Just the kindness of the crowd. Yeah. It was so beautiful yeah. and um, and I and unexpected. Uh, so I think that was it, but watching these two gals go back and, and relive every word and you could just see the memories in their head as they were singing along to these songs and that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I'm so excited about it. And I've been like to other music festivals and stuff, but again, like, thank you. You're the first music festival to like really take me seriously and give me like a space to do what I do best. And it was a really cool experience. I met a lot of cool people like Tom from the plain white tees was just walking by and I was like, yo, you want to do an interview? And he's like, yep. You know what I mean? And then we became Instagram buddies and now we've talked and interviewed him, you know, when he was in Minneapolis, but like I got to put myself in a different position than what I usually have done, but like treated professionally. And that was fucking cool. You know what I mean? And my career now, like I, I've, I talked about this on my last episode, which should be out by the time this comes out. Um, but I'm finally closing down my store and it's not a sad thing. Like it's, it's bittersweet of like, I did that for 10 years, you know? So it's weird to not introduce myself as, Hey, I'm Chris. I own the skate shop, you know, cause I've done that almost my whole adult life, but I'm excited about what's next, you know? And in order to make something like that life possible, I need to have some cool, consistent things happening. And being able to work with you guys every year is really fun for me. It's like something I get to look forward to. And it's not like a little, oh, I got this interview this week. It's like leading up to the entire time. There's like so much behind it. So my favorite moment was probably being on stage with All Time Low, because I had never really listened to him. Um, but we were just like chatting backstage a little bit and they're like, yeah, you should come. So I went and I stood up there, um, with my buddy, Jaron, who he was on the show. I'm Jaren's, uh, and we were drinking a beer on the back and then they finished their set 
And of course they're going to do an encore, you know, but they finish their set and they run off and the guitarist like almost knee slides down to like crouch, you know, and he's right next to me looking up at me. He's like, we got one more. We got one more. Don't you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And then they pop back out and they do the whole thing. It was so awesome. And then I don't know if I told you this, but I was in Australia like a month later um, and I was in the Sydney airport flying home and I saw they're just there. Like I was in the Delta Lounge <laughs> and the singer, which I didn't listen to them that much, but the singer comes out of the bathroom and I'm like drinking a beer and I look at him and he looks at me like, I don't remember how I know you, you know, and we did the, what's up, man? And then I'm thinking about it and it took me like five, 10 minutes and I'm like, I think that was the singer of all time low. So I like pop up on my phone and yup, the night before was like, awesome last day in of our Australian tour. And I was like, no way. So then I look around, don't see him. I'm like, bummer, I should have said what's up. Well then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, they're American, I'm flying to LA. Like maybe, who knows? So I go to like wait for my flight and then the guitarist comes walking up. So I went and talked to him for a little while and then Alex the singer had some issue or they like asked him for his ticket, whatever. So me and this, the guitarist get through the security and we're waiting like for him to get done dealing with his stuff and he walks up and then we like talk for a solid few minutes of like, oh, how was your trip, blah, blah, blah. Cause like I'm a recognizable person, you yeah. know what I mean? So it was really cool that they were like, oh, I remember you from a month ago, blah, 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 blah. It's amazing. Yeah, so cool. Like people from all time low recognize me pretty sick and then i on my flight they were in first class or somewhere up in the, where yeah. i can't afford not, it yeah right? not where we sit no no no, no. <laughs> um but that it was so empty in the back part of the plane that i took an entire middle row of four, four seats and just like had a bed and i was like dude i had a better seating situation than you guys <laughs> it was pretty sick <laughs> yeah it was it was it was fun you know and that was the beautiful thing about reverb you know our mc mm. had never emceed before um she's doing it again this year right? she is yeah, yeah chelsea is amazing and you know so she just kind of looked at me and she's like yes i'll do it okay and she just owned it she crushed she it. crushed it, was cool. it. and yeah. you know and now she's like heather i found this whole other side of who i am and i think that's that's the cool thing and when, when we look at the you asked about our team that's you know seven people but the reality of it is it's not we have all of these amazing humans that roll in to help us do the festivals that you know our personnel director's a nurse sure you know, she's like, I just like doing something different. You know, we, we have a lot of educators that come and help us in the summer that sure. manage our bars or manage our gates or whatever that is. And so people love to lean into this different world for a couple of days. And, you know, I think I think what you found is when you got in that world, you're like, it's pretty cool in here. I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's nice that I mean, I do a lot leading up to as well, but not like you. I get to, for the most part, show up and do the fun stuff. So I don't have to do anything of the bad things. Even when it's all done, I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna dip out. You guys can clean up. Not that there was much cleaning up, but still, no. like, I was just like, I'm gonna pack up my stuff and leave. See you guys later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always say the day after the festival is the worst hangover you'll ever have without drinking. <laughs> it's awful. Well, especially the, when it was 90 degrees. The adrenaline stops. You're tired. You're really hungry. It's like yeah. just get. I just want to go home. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's awesome. We love having you be a part of Reverb, and um, we just can't wait to see where it goes and you know our, our joke was last year if everybody came to the festival last year tells one more person to go we get to continue to do this yeah you know and so pass the word you know tell people hey if you can't go let people know there's yeah. eau claire is this really cool festival and you know i can't go this year but you know you can see you know this, you know you can go see ti and and yellow card in the same stage or if you want yeah um yeah. so yeah it's it's a really fun thing for us to continue to grow and show off what we do here in Eau Claire. And if people want these things to exist, they have to go to them. Right. Like, and even if you can't go to them, like I said, telling people, but like you, you have to support it. If you want these things to exist in your town, it's just like local businesses. You have to go, you have to support, you have to talk about it with people. Otherwise these things won't exist. Yeah. I'm confident that even if like you guys lost money on this festival this year or whatever, it would still come back because there's momentum and you're investing and you want it to be something bigger, but still you can't like lose money forever. If, if, it, if people don't go, it's just not going to continue to happen. So like we got to keep pushing and tell everybody to please support the things that are going on in your town, local musicians and stuff too, but everything local that's happening, including the festivals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do it a little sooner. That's yeah. a that's a huge that's a that's a whole other podcast. Guys, yeah. But like 
people waiting to the last minute to buy their tickets for them is actually leading to the demise of many festivals because, sure. you know, quite frankly, you have to pay your artist deposits 30 days out. Mm-hmm. And if people are buying their tickets the week before, like if you don't have... And you don't know how to plan effectively either. No, no. You don't I know mean, how many staff members to have or anything. How many staff, how many public safety is a huge issue. Like we have to be prepared for you to be there. So right. um, yeah, give us give us a call. Prices are going to go up on mid-July, June, to July 10th, I think. So save some money, get your tickets early and get that campsite reserved. It's. I promise you, I promise you, you won't regret it or yeah. be disappointed. Like there's, there's no reason you won't have a wonderful time. So, Reverb W I on Instagram. If you just search Reverb Music Festival mm-hmm. on Google, it, it'll pop up everywhere. You can use the promo code Passion Pod for ten dollars off. Not that you really need to, but you can. Which can? Yeah, which would Why save you a little bit of money. I'll be there. You'll be there, and Yellow Card will be there. Which. My earliest memory of them was my first job ever. I was a full-time dishwasher one summer when I was 14 because I wanted to get an iPod. And my mom let me buy it before I made the money. And I had Yellow Card's album on that iPod when I was 14 and I was so stoked. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.